Hello students, good morning. Welcome back to the online classes. Uh, today I am going to take poem 5, the ball poem. Poem number 5, the ball poem, written by John Berryman. Now the central idea of the poem is, the poet John Berryman in the ball poem describes the grief of a boy over the loss of his ball. With that loss, he senses his first responsibility in a materialistic world where those whom you love and your worldly possessions will not be with you forever. The poem shows how all through your life you will be forced to do things that you don't want to do and you will lose or have to give up the things that you have that you love. But despite this, you have to learn to stand up, to be strong and get on with your life no matter how much it hurts inside because that is the only way you will survive. It thus teaches us to learn to accept and let go and not cling on to something that you can never have. So the poem is very uh, authentic poem which teaches us to be responsible in our life. Now, a small child is not so much responsible towards its thing. He just uses it, it just, he just uh, throws it, he just breaks it and then he gets because he knows that his parent will buy things for him. But as he grows, as he comes to the higher classes, slowly, genuinely, he learns to be responsible and that uh, helps him to grow in a maturity. Okay? When he comes to class, when he comes, uh, uh, uses his pencil and box and all, takes care of that, that no one take it. And after taking it, gets it back and keeps in his bag. And that's the way he learns this responsibility and he learns. Second thing, the poet is trying to tell that even if you lose something which is very uh, dear to you, which is very loving to you, you should let it go. You should not cling to it. If you remember the poem uh, Robert Frost, The Dust of Snow or uh, The Fire and Eyes, you know, especially The Dust of Snow, where he says that, uh, we, uh, that the forest, uh, Rob, uh, Robert Forrest says that uh, we should not cling to our sadness. We should not cling to our mistakes. What has happened is happened. What is gone is gone. It's not going to come back. So simply sitting and thinking about that mistake, why it has happened, how it has happened, and uh, uh, simply crying there is useless. It's a waste. And that's what happened uh, Robert Frost during that dust of snow. When the dust of snow falls, he come back to life. Why am I wasting my time? Okay, happiness happened. Now the rest of the day is with me. Let me use it. Similarly, here, the poet also tells that we should, if you should, we should not cling to something very close, very tight. Because when it goes, it gives you lots of pain. It's better have a kind of a distance and keep it this way. So that even if that is lost, you should not feel grief or cry for that. Goes, goes, take the other one and go ahead. Instead of saying that, putting a close, uh, full stop there and not going ahead should not be. Live it, forget about it and move ahead. That's what the poet trying to tell us through this poem through a small boy. The ball poem. What is the boy now who has lost his ball? What? What is he to do? I saw it go merrily bouncing down the street and then merrily over there it is the water. No use to say, oh, there are other balls. The poem is about a little boy. For the first time in his young life, he is learning what it is like to experience grief at the loss of a much loved possession, that is, his ball. The ball is here symbolic of the sweet memories of his childhood. The boy loses his ball and watches bouncing down the street into the water. To us, the loss of a ball is of minor consequence, but to the little boy, it was a valued possession. The poet here deters himself from saying 
that there are other balls because the boy wants the same ball. The ball had been with him for a long time and was linked to the memories of the days when he played with it. The boy's ball personifies his young days and happy innocence. So the poem, the ball poem, it's about a boy who, had, who lost his ball and he just learned the uh, experience of grief. He just learned what is sadness, what is grief, what is sorrowful because of his lost ball which he loved so much okay, and which, which he had for a long long time. It could be that his grandfather or his parent or one of his close aunt had given this ball on his birthday and he had kept it very very securely, safely, giving no one uh, access to the ball. And when it was lost, he was very, very uh, sorrowful, he was crying, weeping and he wanted the same ball. There are many other balls but he wanted the same ball. Why? Because the memories were attached to the uh, this ball. Similarly, it happens in our life. When we are childhood, we have we all have attachments to our childhood. Sometimes when we sit together and sometimes when we have little grief, we look back to our childhood and think that the childhood days were beautiful. If it was possible that I would have been a child forever in my life, I should not have grown up, then what a wonderful life it would have been. Sorry, it cannot be. Childhood is one stage, then comes boyhood, adulthood, old age, everything. A stage is there and we have to cross each and every stage. And at each and every stage, we will have some or other problems, difficulties, grief. Only thing, I have to learn to handle all these problems and difficulties. Instead of attaching myself to that uh, stage. Whereas, I should forget leave it and go ahead. I should move ahead of the uh, place. An ultimate shaking grief fixes the boy as he stands rigid, trembling, staring down all his young days into the harbour where his ball went. I would not intrude on him. A thing, another ball is worthless. When the young boy loses his ball, it bounces away and lands in the harbour. The boy is very much troubled at the loss of his ball and plunges into grief. He stands stiff and trembling while staring at his ball. He is upset as he looks into the gloomy water because he cannot find the ball. The boy is deeply affected by the loss of his ball because it has been with him for a long time. When the ball bounces into the water, all his memories of the childhood days flashes in front of him. This leads to a realization that those moments would not come back, just like the ball. Further, the poet doesn't offer him money to buy another ball because that would be worthless. Now, when the young boy loses his ball, when he loses his ball, he, all the memories attached to the ball comes back. When our grandparents die. You know, when our grandparents die, immediately the past comes to uh, in front of us. The memories attached to our grandfather during our childhood comes forward. Or when a friend is gone away, we start remembering about that, those good days that we had spent with our friend. The poet says that it is useless thinking that. It is good in a moment to see, to think about it, but if you go more and more, it will give more and more grief to you. It's better, forget about it, pray for that person and go ahead. That's why the poet says that I will not give money to the boy because it's useless. Even if he buys that ball, he may not play with that as much he used to play. But he wanted the same ball which, has, which he had got and which he had got uh, long back and which was there with him for a long, long time. He doesn't want to miss that, he wants the same thing. But he has learned that this is not going to come back, just like his childhood. The childhood which is gone and now he has come entered in the boyhood, which, uh, which is a new stage and he has to grow up. Now, he senses first responsibility in a world of possessions. 
people will take balls balls will be lost always little boy and no one buys a ball back money is external the boy is upset when he looks into the gloomy water because he cannot find the ball this is when he gets his first sense of responsibility the poet the poet suggests that from the loss of the ball the boy is learning what it means to lose something in a world of possessions where he will lose things will buy some more to replace the ones lost but would never be able to buy back the thing that he had lost in this poem the boy's ball personifies his young days and happy innocence the poet thus makes the boy understand about his responsibility as the loss is immaterial money is external as it cannot buy memories nor can it replace the things that we love the things that really matter so the boy starts realizing you know, that uh, during his up he is upset is gloomy because the ball is lost the ball cannot be found uh, found now and he uh, the this uh, ball uh, rep represents you know the childhood of the boy and he understands that my childhood is gone it cannot come back just like the ball the which has drowned in the water and gone i cannot get that same ball i may get another ball but i may not enjoy it similarly the childhood my childhood is gone i have entered the boyhood only the memories are there the poet uh, tells him that he has learned his first responsibility in this materialistic world the ball which is a material he should have taken care of it that's the way we learn the responsibility whatever is there with me i should take care of that thing you know then only i can be responsible towards my uh, behavior my character my uh, deeds and learn a lot of things the ball the ball is gone the childhood is gone now i have grown up i have to be more responsible towards my work towards my attitude and the uh, poet tells that money is external it cannot buy everything the money cannot buy the memories the money cannot buy the happiness the, the money cannot buy joy that you had during the childhood so you should just go over it don't cling to it but walk over it memories are there it will remain there but if you go on remembering that it will give more and more pain and that's what the poet says that you should just overcome it you just replace the thing with the other love and other things he is learning well behind his desperate eyes this epistemology of loss how to stand up knowing what every man must one day know and most know many days how to stand up the poet suggests that from the loss of the ball the boy is learning how to stand up in a world of possessions the boy is learning what it means to lose something the poet says that knowing that every man has to stand up after such <coughs> such losses the boy too <coughs> will learn how to stand up and leave the losses behind as he would have understood the true meaning and nature of loss so the poet suggests that from the loss of the ball the boy is learning how to stand up in a world of possession so he has learned that the things will be lost the things will be gone but i have to stand i should not cling to it i should not hold on to it but leave it let it go and i also should move ahead i should i i should learn to love those things instead of clinging on it or holding on it and that's the way the boy learns the responsibility he learns to stand up when something goes wrong he learns to uh, get a solution for his problems instead of sitting and crying so he learns a lot of things through this poem i believe you might have understood the poem now uh, the poetic devices used in the poems are the black verse the poem is written in unrhymed iambic pen uh, pentameter that means black verse means there is no rhythm in the uh, rhyming in it it is uh, different different uh, things are there now what is the boy now who 
has lost his ball what what is he do i saw it go mid now so all the endings if you see they are changed they are different one after another if you see the, the previous one the wild uh, animal in that rhyming scheme was it in the uh, uh, so now the small all uh, tree see things wings no these are the rhyming scheme but here there is no rhyming scheme then there is a uh, another device called symbolism a figure of speech where an object person or situation has another meaning other than its literal meaning now the ball symbolizes the boy's young and innocent days so that is a symbolism used the ball is used as symbol symbol for the young days of the boy that is childhood of the boy then repetition repetition of words phrases in the same line what what and balls ball so the repetition also used in the uh, device uh, in this poem and the last one was alliteration repetition of initial consonant sounds in the same line what w w b b no the consonant sound alliteration means the same letter is used in the same line okay as in the what what w w then ball ball b b okay that's the thing so in the initials there are four alliterations the four uh, poetic devices are used one is the black verse where there is no rhyming scheme in this second symbolism the ball is used as a symbol for the boy's young age repetition the words are repeated again and again in each line and alliteration the consonant word letter is used in each and every uh, line i believe you might have understood the poem thank you have a nice day